Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Education. This is an educational platform to help you as a parent, as teachers, as students and the kids themselves. This program is designed to help us to understand our children when it comes to their educational development, social development, spiritual development, emotional and physical development. I know that as a parent you want the best for your ward and as we want the best that is why we are here. My name is Daitessa Ampofu from Let's Talk Education at Consult. Today's episode we are going to talk about how best and how important it is for you as a parent to encourage reading with your ward. How best do you read to your ward? Do you remember the last time you ever took a book to read to your ward? Do you know the importance it plays in your child's life? This is what we are going to discuss, learn and talk about. Let's go for a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Let's Talk Education. As I said, how early do you read with your ward? Have you ever tried reading with your ward? How, how, how many times do you read with them? When was the last time you took a book to read with your ward? There is a saying that words make up the world. So you ask yourself, what if we didn't have those words to describe objects around, to talk about our feelings and everything? But related to toddlers and the kind of struggle they go through and how bad they can't express themselves because they are babies. And that is why it is important for you as a parent to encourage your ward to read and you yourself read. You know, there is this trick I always encourage parents to work around with. You see your phone? Say, you are using your phone now. Get a very big book. A very big one that they know you will never finish reading in any time soon. Slot your phone in. Do all that you want to do. Tell them to pick their books and then it will, it will help you. It will also encourage them to read. Why? Because mommy is doing it, daddy is doing it, and it is helping. So, yes, you can more from a honey reading and how best we need to encourage and push them to get an understanding. Their reading plays a very important role in their life. Say a button, you need to find a nice way to go about it. So today, Yebeshe Hawa as button, even with the importance of reading with your word, time ever there structure, a kwan ever there is a fado, how to encourage wara woba input to pick a book and read. And then Afrobanara so hawa reading no obob one. That is if we encourage him or her to read. Most often we think that reading is something we are born with. Uh, somebody will say a trademark or an, uh, something you are inheriting because your parents can do it, so you can naturally do it as well. It is something that is grown bit by bit through series, through words, through sounds, and your child gets an interest. It's something you have to build. So you need to build a foundation, put it up, and then you can have a whole building. That is your world life, and that is how best you can develop them. Sabana Kinkana, it plays a very key role in our life. And as it plays that key role, you can't read a document and not understand it. So there's a difference between reading to understand and just reading it. And so how do we encourage our kids to do that? I've given you a bit earlier, so we can work around it. But let's look at this um, important research that was put out. On the 4th of April 2019, Ohio State University summarized the research they gathered. And they said that young children whose parents read to them five books a day enter kindergarten having had about 1.4 million more words than kids who were never read to. And that is a study that holds till now. And so ask yourself, if 1.4 million more words are gathered by a child, I will read the books, five books to them in a day. Ask yourself the deficit for your child. How many words is your child losing in a day out of this 1.4 million? To encourage your word to read, there is a process we go through. You know, we do not read with the alphabet, that is the ABC, no. We read with the sounds, that is the ABCD. And so as we roll a video for you to see, kindly listen to how the child is uh, um, mentioning the sounds with the words that are being put down 
to encourage reading. So as you saw the little boy reading her sounds, that is how reading begins. Reading starts from series. Step by step, we get it. So as our kind of sounds, you know, these sounds will be put together as words. This is where you get your sentences from your paragraphs, and then you are moving on to your chapters, encouraging the child to read. When he was reading his sounds, you could notice how calm he was, sounding it out, helping himself relate it with the flashcards not in all use, you know. And so he mentions the sounds, he adds the flashcards to it, which is a beginning sound. And that is how reading, the basics of reading start. As you encourage a child to read with the sounds, it helps them. For example, a, b, k, d, e, f, inima, hyanam fancy, hyanam chi, hyan hausa, hyanam ga, ayekano, is one basic way to encourage your number from her to read. But because we have adapted ways of reading when it comes to the English language with the alphabet, hyanam refri, hyanam sounds, no. And so if you have names at home like Ama, Ole, Aku, Shika, you realize these are names that come with the sounds, not the alphabet. So you have Ama as A, M, A, not A-M-A. And so if you say A-M-A, how do you read A-M-A? And so we need to find a nice way to go about it. And so from the basics to encourage a child to read, to encourage you as a parent to also love it reading to your word, you need to push the sounds. And these are most often um, mostly taught at school. Kids learn these at school. And to so ask yourself, your word going to school, are they learning how to sing the ABC song or they are learning the sounds? Though there's this lady, an old lady who was complaining about neba, nenana, hawa, obefia, on read. Why? Because the others are reciting their ABC and singing through words, and she's so happy listening and hearing it from them. And then when it comes to the spelling, they go like C A T, cut. Which C A T is no cut? Kat is cut. Because the word pronunciation comes with how you spell the sounds out, and it's very easy to get kids to read. And so if you are encouraging your word to do A, B, C, and the reading is not coming, we need to find a way to change it. Just like the young boy was doing, reading his sounds out, relating it to the flashcards, and smiling through it. Because from this, if you put the words together, it should be easy for the child to read. Now, the reason why I'm emphasizing on the basics is that when you don't get the basics, it is difficult for you to encourage reading in a child. How do they understand the words? How do they pronounce it? How do they get comfortable with it? So that when they listen to you as you're reading, they get to know, oh, okay, if I don't even know the whole words, the first initial sound helps me, the last sound helps me, the middle one I know, I know my vowels, I know my consonants, and so whatever word they're saying is related to that. When we encourage children to read, it opens them up 
to a lot. Now, there is this uh, underlying statement that goes often when uh, a black man is talking about something. Yes, say, what say? As a zisha buku mwa, oyezen, the sebio, yabakankan. But then when you put it out there in videos and movies, you get others watching it. And so whatever information we are sorting after to help ourselves, to help our kids develop, it is logged in there, the book. And if we don't read it, we won't get an understanding. There is an important factor that as a parent, you need to put in place when you are helping your child to read. As a parent, these are some of the reasons why you need to help your child to read or read it to them to encourage them to love it. Reading helps expand a child's vocabulary, the words they will use to communicate. And so you have a word at home who has a challenge communicating or telling you about stuff. Read to them. Get them to love words. They come to you, they can't express themselves. It is important to build their vocabularies for them. And reading can do that. You can start as early as baby in the womb when they come out, going through three months, six months, 12 months and above. Reading improves their comprehension as well. As I am talking to you, I'm sure you are loving it and you would love your word to communicate like this. Reading plays a very critical role in there as well. Reading improves concentration and memory. When you encourage a child to read, a boa fraba mo otumakankan, an adawara encouraging in a way no otumakankana, it helps them to remember what they have learned. It helps them to concentrate. You know why? As you are telling the story, the child is eager to know what will happen next. And so their attention and concentration and everything is with you. After telling the story, there is the need for them to understand that this is what the story is about. So there is a communication. So they remember what the story is about. The characters in there. Who did what? Why did this person say this? How come this was done? And so it helps with concentration and memory. And it helps them in classes as well. Reading provides a great bonding activity for parents and children. Your parent who has a challenge with your kids and finds it very, very, very uncomfortable to relate with them, reading can bring you together. Reading can find you a nice way to bond with them and relate with them. And so when they say, Daddy is coming, when I come into no one went, no one hide. Why? Because Daddy has a ritual with them and Daddy will find time to sit and read with them, no matter how hyped or no matter how off a daddy is. Now, reading can also foster a child's imagination and creativity. We live in a 21st century world where kids are prone to creativity, which is part of the 21st century skills. Creativity plays a very key role in every child's life. As they listen to you read, they imagine in their own way. Why do you think they watch cartoons and they want to play the characters? They want to play the characters because they've seen them, they want to act like them, they want to do even better than them. And so it will push your children to imagine and be very creative. And each one of us want to be very creative at what we do. And so as you encourage your child to read, you read to them, they read themselves, it will help them to imagine beyond their age what they really want to do and help them as well. Reading helps kids perform better academically. Why wouldn't it help them? As a child gets to read, they get to understand. They get to love reading. They get to know what it is when you read. Read to understand. There is this um, funny story of a couple who went to buy medicine and that medicine on the medicine they had written, shake before you drink. So you have these couples shaking their whole body Dancing, chada was so was shaky and sana wa fedrin, and then they had somebody passing by, and the person asked, "Na daddy na mummy, what are we doing?" Or so, yako tsoedru na wasi yenu, na wasi yen shake and sana yano me druno. No, so they said shake your body this way. No, so um, and so the gentleman took the bottle, read it, and then communicated. It says shake, as in shake the bottle before. You drink it. It's just shaking your body before drinking it. It's not it. Or you're not. And so just imagine you reading and not understanding. As you read and you explain, you get the kids to understand it as well. And academically, it helps them to perform. For my own children, as I have said, it helps them vocabulary-wise. It helps them. They get to know new words. This is where you have four-year-olds saying words and you go like, it's it, it's them where do you feel him? 
It's from the books they have they have listened to you read to them. It's from the books you've read together. It's from the things you've done together when it comes to reading. It makes them better at it. As you read to them, they would love to also take their books and read by themselves. And that is where you are building independency for them. And so you have kids, adults with ages, you have 10-year-olds, seven-year-olds loving to read to their younger ones because it's an example for them to build. And then it builds self-confidence. Just imagine you have a young lady. I can can actually now I enjoy the reading session, loving every story. And then she's having a full communication with her colleagues. She would talk out of boldness. She would talk out of confidence. And then she would let her peers know that whatever that is happening is related to reading. And she's really a getting it, building confidence. It's keep them safe. Now, there are a lot happening, especially on social media, where you have kids using phones a lot, ha handling phones, keeping them on platforms and all that. But then when you introduce reading to your ward, say introduce reading to Obana, or build the love, the passion around taking books and reading, other than taking phones, and surfing on the internet, seeing things they are not supposed to see, being introduced to things they are not supposed to be introduced to. And so it encourages them and keeps them safe. It also helps them to make a sense around the world. What don't you get to know when it comes to reading? When you take a book and you're reading, it depends on the topic you're talking about, be it um, fiction, be it real life, be it whatever that you're reading. And it tells you a lot about so we say reading is an open door, an open window for you to see what is happening outside your comfort zone, your area, your home. And so kids read and they look beyond themselves. They get to see what other children are doing, other people are doing, and it encourages them to do what they have to do and do it well. It also le leads to imagination, good imagination, as we talked about. It entertains them. Reading is not boring, no. I can can on your boring at all. It is fun and it keeps kids at the corner. And when you see a child reading and you see them smiling in between, you should know that something good is happening in there. When reading, how to encourage a child to build reading, to make it fun to them, create a lovely corner for them, a place where they will have a comfort zone, a comfort area for them. Pick books that are interesting. Don't go and pick boring books. Books that are boring, you have an 11 year old and you want to give them a whole page to read. You need to build it up from five pages, from pictures to 10 pages to 20 pages to the pages as they grow. So find interesting things you want your world to know. You don't go and pick up a law book for a child of 15 years and tell them to read at a go. It will be boring. But you need to find light cases, cases that will draw them in, that will make them very fully interested in what they are reading. And so they are reading a story about a young man who got into trouble because they didn't listen to their parents and it's becoming a court case or it's becoming um, a case that is being taken to the police station. They want to know what is happening. They want to know what is being related. Okay, so what is going to happen to the young man in the picture? What is going to happen? So moral stories, happy stories, stories that will encourage them, stories that they would love to read, come to you and talk about it. Mommy, when I read this book, do you know what happened in there? Do you know what happened? This person did this, this person did that. And then when they are reading in between, don't call them. Hi. We'll read in our own, we'll build one comfort, we'll get details. And that is when you call, Ama, please, can you come and take my phone for me? Can you plug this for me? Can you take this for me? When you cut them in between, the book reading doesn't become fun anymore because you are drawing them away from the dreamland they are into a different space. And then one more thing to encourage your word, to make reading very happy, is that you can start with them. You can start with them to read through and then in between you leave them. When you come back, you ask them, what did I miss? That is where you know that your child is really reading to understand and they will tell you the details as well. And then it improves their writing skills. When a child reads and loves to read, 
their vocabs, their comprehension, everything is put in place. And so that child loves to write. And so if you have a ward who is avoiding writing and is above the age of eight, you should find a way about it. And let's see how best we can roll through what we can roll through when it comes to a child's development, when it comes to reading. What you have on your screen is a baby being introduced to reading. And so someone will ask, how early can I start reading to my ward? I initially said you can start reading to your baby from the womb. They will listen and get to know your voice. But what you see on your screen is a six-month-old baby sitting down comfortably, being taken through a space of reading. So this is what we refer to as picture reading. Picture reading. So they are going through picture reading. They are not really reading the words out because you would take it that at that point, they might not really understand it. But then the picture reading helps the child, loves the book. Next time when you are not around, they might crawl to pick up the book and open it up, touch it here and there. And so as they are flipping through the books, enjoying the pictures, they are also looking at colors, they are looking at shapes, they are looking at how things are turning, they are pointing, they are smiling through, they are loving through, and she is pointing as well. So if you are a parent, if you are a parent and you are encouraging your child to read and you feel that you do not know how to read, we can start with pictures. Yes, they can be distracted one way or the other as they are reading. You don't force them to sit because when you look at kids like this, they have an attention span. But you should know that there is something drawing their attention to what you are flipping and what you are opening it to them. And so if you have something that is drawing them away, find out what is drawing them. What is distracting them? What is not making them not sit? Then you can get it. So that is where you have a certain and you know that you have other adults in there guiding other kids to listen. As you see on your screens as well, the tutor is encouraging the kids to know who the writer is. And that is what is happening. When you take a book, there's a need for you to introduce the book to the child. Who wrote the book? Why did they write it? What is the color of the book? Who are the characters you see at the front of the page? What, what are the colors? Let them mention them to you. These are little ways you draw them in when it comes to reading. So they get to mention the colors. They get to know the person who wrote it. They get to touch and feel the book. Then we can start flipping and learning about it. This encourages a child to love reading and fall in love with it. As a parent, I would say, let's find a nice way, build around reading, encourage our kids to love it as we go on. Okay, there, Mr. Falfon, for your book in them, number book in it when you, as they see you, they will also love to go and take your book. That is where they will ask, when did your child start reading? When did your child start doing this? Then you tell them it was from example because they watch what you do, and they emulate it. Let's go for a quick commercial break. Be right back. Welcome back. Let's talk education, and we are talking the education. Yes, we've talked about the importance of encouraging your ward to read, helping them to read, reading with them, and allowing them to read as well. When we talk about reading, it takes patience because we build it in steps. You start from one, and then you pick up to two. Like you're climbing the staircase. When you want to encourage a child to read, the importance is to help them to understand the sounds as we talked about. Let me quickly introduce some basic sounds to you so you get to know what we were talking about aside the videos you've watched already. Let's say, for example, you want to take a child through learning uh, flashcards with the sounds themselves. I've already spoken about how important it is to involve every aspect of learning when it comes to a child. That is your tactile learners, your visual learners, your auditory learners, very important. They play a key role in every aspect of helping a child develop. 
And so in front of me, I have flashcards that will help children know that this is the picture you are talking about when it comes to what you are mentioning. This is a van. And in order to help a child know the basics of reading, you introduce the cards to them to know that these are the pictures. So this is picture reading. You take your child through picture reading, then you can encourage with the first initial sounds. But before you do your picture reading, you need to start encouraging your child to know the sounds themselves. So you have V here, you have J, you have A, you have O, you have K, and you have N. Why do I have them here? To help the child to know that in order for you to read, knowing the sounds, touching them and feeling them also plays a very important role. So you have a van. You ask your child, what is the first sound you hear? The first sound you hear is V. Okay, that is why we have the V here. So the first sound is V. Now, as you introduce the V sound to them, you allow them to pick and feel it and put it where the V sound is. So if you have a card like this, they can put this here to help them know that the first sound you're talking about is what they are holding. So V here is what they are, the V on this card is what they are holding in their hands. So let's have this example. So you have a two, three year old with you introducing some flashcards to them the pronunciation shouldn't be a worry. Allow them to pronounce it the way they can pronounce, especially when they are too head and up. Some kids are early listeners, early talkers, but other kids will build their way through it. So you introduce your first initial sounds and cuts to them. You go, um, you start pronouncing them and pronounce it very well for them to hear. So you have van, you have jar, you have ant, you have oil, key and then net this is picture reading the phases of reading this is picture reading so the next time you ask your child to repeat it this is how they will go about it van jar ant oil key and net and then in between you ask them what is this and then they can tell you, this is ant. What is this? Key. What is this? Van. As they get involved and happy about knowing the flashcards and how to pronounce them, they get acquainted with it, which helps them to love the first initial sounds that you introduce to them. So the first initial sound of a, of a van is V. The first initial sound of a jar is j. You have a for ant, o for oil, k for key, n for net. When you want to allow the space for a child to enjoy reading and fall in love with it, you allow them to play with it a little so they will mess it up. So we call it as we are messing up, we are learning. Good. These are also just flashcards with pictures at the back that will help your child fall in love when it comes to reading. This can be thought to a child as early as 14 months and above, even eight months. This opens their mind to love pictures when it comes to picture reading. So it's either you use the front with just the sound and the name, or we do the pictures and the names. So you have one. As we have van here, and then we have van at the back. And that is a very beautiful van. And as you are discussing this van, you can talk about the wheels, the colors. You can talk about um, our little pom-pom here with the nose. Everything concerning the van, we can talk about it. This is where they start having a full conversation with you. Same goes on for egg. Initial sound, air. You have sun, initial sound s. You have frog, initial sound f. You have ink, initial sound e. So if 
if you if you have noticed whatever that we are going through here doesn't have the ABCD because the ABCD makes it very difficult to pronounce the words you have her as hen because you've taught the child about your a ah, your bo your ko your do and then you can't teach the child abaka and then say dog is dog dog is not dog it's the auger it makes it very simple so this is how you can encourage your word to um, love pictures love their names initiate it and help them read as well that's for the flash that's let's talk about storybooks how best you can help your child love reading so this is a, a moral story to help our kids and as a moral story as a parent if you are reading it you need to take your time to love it and as you pronounce the words in there it encourages the child to love it as well you don't take the book and then say so today i'm a we are going to read about a moral story is it dotty dotty stands up stands up dotty stands up for tabby ah oh, okay no whenever you take a book and you want to read with your word you should introduce the book to your soul first read the book love the book know the pages so as you are having an interesting time with your word they get to know that you have also gone through it and you love the story you are telling them not you running through it so i have a lovely green book here what are some of the colors you can see what are some of the colors you can see so they will point there is green there are shades of green they will tell you this is white they'll tell you this is green this is brown they can see red and then they'll go, hmm, I think this is a dog or it's a cow. I think this is a duck. What is this, mommy? And this? That is how you start your reading session with them. You don't pick the book and tell them to sit down and you just start to read it. And then as you're introducing it to them, you let them know, as we said, who wrote the book, where is it from? So it's written up here, Young Learners, Easy to Read, Moral Stories. And then you tell them the, the title, Doughty Stands Up for Tabby. Darling, do you understand who stands up for someone? That is where you introduce to them, so they love it. What is it when we talk about stand up? What is it when we say somebody is standing up for someone? They need to understand, no matter the age. And so they've written the ages here, ages four plus. So I have an ages four plus here. But no matter the book you are picking, don't think the child is too young for you to introduce the book to them. Talk about it a little before you talk about the story or read a story from the book. When you're reading with a child, be it on your bed, on his or her bed. As you lie down, your child should be cuddled down by your side then you can flip the book this way so they can also see it but if you are sitting with them this way where your child is sitting by you you need to turn it in a way that they can see it or you have to put it down this way so we all read together with our finger okay so let's do a little reading so that as a parent you know the tempo to pick when you are reading with your kids so it says Dotty stands up for Tabby. So if you're guiding your child through reading, you can use your finger this way and point it. Dotty stands up for Tabby. And then you can ask a question. Who do you think is Dotty? Who do you think is Tabby? So you talk about it, you discuss. Okay, so this is Dotty. I think Dotty stands up for Tabby. And this is Tabby. So they get to know the characters they are reading about. All right, and then we flip. Let's have a little reading. Dottie was excited. Her class was going for a picnic to the fun park. It had a musical fountain and many fun rides. Everyone was getting something to eat. Mother packed a box of sandwiches for Dottie 
to share with her friends. This is the tempo you pick. Don't say that because you know how to read already as a parent, you will run through it. So Dottie was excited. Her class was going for a picnic to the fun park. It had a musical fountain and many fun rides. Everyone was getting, why? Because you are, you, you are tired already. You want to quickly finish up the book and get up and go. Or maybe your kid is being a little fussy. They are not sitting down and listening to you. How did you introduce the book to them? How did you build their, their, their love to listen to the story or read it together? You have to be gentle, very gentle, approaching books. This will help them understand the words you are pronouncing, the, the punctuations, the, where it's really, really important for them to know that this is it. You stretch it a bit so they get to know. And you need to learn how to read within the temple. When it goes up, when it falls down, and in between. That is the best you can do. So as I was reading, the school bus came on time. Dottie got on the bus. Her classmates and teachers were already there. Soon, the bus was on its way to the fun park. The children shouted, Yippee! They started clapping and singing. So you, you, in between that, you can have a little song and sing with your word. So what kind of song were they singing? Can we try one? And then we can sing one, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I let it go away. Why did you let it go? Because they bit my finger so which finger did it by this little finger on my right why because you want to get your child involved in the story that you are telling and as they sing in their minds they think they are with them they are with the characters and that is how you get them interested in reading they put themselves in there to understand the story so they are happy yippee going and then after the singing you can ask did you love it do you think they are singing the same song Oh, it's a different one. We can try another one. Not really. Okay. Then you move to the next page. But we read stories to our children like, ah, well, in a hurry, running. Because daddy needs to pick up some calls. Daddy needs to make some calls. Daddy needs to do something else. This is why it is important for you as a parent to build time for your word. Okay. So an hour later, the bars reached the park. By the time they reach here, you've built up your child's interest to know what is going to happen at the park. The children were so excited. The park was beautiful. There were colorful flowers everywhere. So then you let them watch and see the colors and the flowers. And then you can point them out and they can tell you that these are the colors and the flowers they are seeing and everybody is happy. The teacher took them to see the musical fountain. The children admired its beauty and enjoyed the music. It was truly magical. That is what we are talking about. What is magic? How magical was it? You explain to the child. After seeing the fountain, the children wished to go to the swings. The teacher gave them permission. The excited children ran ahead while the teacher followed them. So this is where you tell your child it's important that no matter how way you're playing, you have to be careful. Somebody needs to be there to watch you. So reading a storybook is not just about taking the book and reading it. It involves a lot of conversation. And this is where, as parents, if you introduce um, phones and other gadgets to your kids very early, it affects them. You will note that as we are reading the story, we are having a very good conversation. We are talking about what is happening at the park, who is doing what, how they are singing, how careful they are being, and all that. So if you want to encourage reading to your word, it is important to also build patience. You exercise patience with them. Exercise patience whilst they are learning. In between your break, you ask the child, 
who and who are the characters you see. Do you still see Dotty around? Because we need to know that it's about Dotty and Tabby in as much as their friends are involved. And so who is Tabby and where is, where is Dotty? Okay. While running, Tabby fell down. All the children started laughing at him. Aw, and this needs facial expressions when you are reading to your ward. They need to know when somebody is being laughed at, when someone is sad, when somebody is worried. And so, but all the children started laughing at him. Tabby was ashamed and started crying. Dottie felt sorry for him. She came forward and helped him get up. If it were you, will you help your friend get up? This is how you have a conversation with your ward. She, she turned and said to the children, Why are you all laughing? This could have happened to any of us. How would you feel if someone made fun of you? And so as you are reading and getting your child involved, enjoying it and all that, all the facial expressions should be in there to help your world to know that if something is happening, this is how you go about it. If you're a parent and you want to push your child to talk to you and come closer, this is where you wrap up. This is where you put it down and tell him or her that you will continue later. That is where they will come and call you and find out how come Mommy, what happened? Can we go and read the book? Then you've started building a relationship with your child. It is important to do so. Please, let's build a reading character with our children and help them build it for themselves as they develop independently. Let's talk education. This is it. We talk education. We love it. We encourage you. My name is Daitessa Ampofo. I'm from Let's Talk Educational Consult at Teshi Nungwa Estate on the Mango Street. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Call us on 0249-069821. 0249-069821. You can also send your comments on our Facebook pages. We'll read them and answer them as well for you. Hope you had a good time. I did. You have a lovely Saturday. Enjoy yourself. Bye-bye.